The following is a presentation of 13 ABC Action News. Now, your table is ready. Join 13 ABC's Jeff Smith with the decision makers of Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. This is the Round Table. And hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Sunday, just a few days away from a holiday weekend. We appreciate you spending part of your Sunday with us. Well, if you have a job and you're watching us this afternoon, there's a chance right now you are possibly at your business going through the open enrollment period, and that is, of course, for health insurance. Now, if you don't have a job, we feel for you out there. We know there are still many of you out there looking for work, but the reality of it all is that the job you may be searching for might not be there in the long run because of what companies are going through having to pay for health insurance and make sure that all their employees are covered. Some of those companies out there nowadays say they just can't afford it. Uh, and of course, through the last couple of weeks, you have heard this, of course, with the talk of the election and the Affordable Health Care Act, which kicks in in phases over the next two years. It's designed so that every person who wants health insurance gets it. But the question is, at what cost? Those enrollment periods for you, you might be in some sticker shock because of the facts and figures and the fees, but we want to take a look at some of the statistics that we are seeing. So let's show you what employers here in the U.S. expect their health insurance to cost over the next year or so. Insurers are saying, employers saying that they expect their costs, costs to go up by about 7%. 60% say workers will pay more. Walmart, for example, saying that their costs could jump anywhere between 8% and 36% just to have, have health insurance on board. Papa John's been in the news lately. They are saying how they are going to have to raise prices and reduce hours for their workforce just so they can make it by. Obviously, a large company there with the focus here nationally, but we want to turn our focus locally, and we are so pleased to have with us a number of great guests this afternoon here for our program. First, the VP of Compensation and Benefits at the Dana Holding Corporation, Mark Valerius. We appreciate you taking some time. Next to him, Lori Gross, president of Gross Electric. Pleasure to both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Also with us today, because as we talk about health care, we talk about getting healthy mm -hmm. and maybe avoiding those health care premiums altogether. Vicki Riddick, she is over at the University of Toledo Senior Wellness Officer, and also Dr. David Dobrikowski, he is the director of the new School of Healthcare Business Innovation and Excellence. And that was announced in October. We will get more into that uh, program in just a bit. But as we begin here, uh, Mark, and I'll start with you. Uh, as the election came around, there was a lot of talk about how some companies just weren't going to be able to make it. Some of that talk came up about Dana and how it had put forth to its employees saying that, no, we're going to have to cut costs, we're going to have to cut employees. You say that's not necessarily the case, but there is that pink elephant in the room as far as what health insurance means to a major employer. Well, that, that is true, Jeff. I, health care costs is part of our labor costs and it, it goes in just like other costs uh, uh, to attract employees uh, and maintain uh, and retain them. Uh, the thing to remember though is there's other costs that are involved, especially in our industry. There are factors in how we uh, look at the future and how Dana is going to continue to provide the best products for our customers mm -hmm. at the lowest possible cost as well. So we will look at creative ways before we look at any type of layoffs or downsizing or right sizing whatever you want to call it yeah. in order to, to to get to that and point. as of late in fact uh, it wasn't too long ago Barclays looked at Dana and said you guys are on the right track back from bankruptcy protection and what Dana is doing right now so obviously the the increased costs are of a concern as you move forward and and we're looking globally in scope yeah we can't look at things short term anymore I mean we have to look out five seven ten years out and in particular in healthcare. I mean, with the health care law changes, health care reform, there are uh, years in which the uh, certain things impact companies, like, for example, 2014 with the exchanges, mm -hmm. 2018 with the Cadillac tax. Those are the type of things that we have to look at. We have to plan for those going forward. And what type of plan we want to design uh, for our workforce to attract and maintain uh, and retain them. For a major corporation like Dana, when you look at some of the figures we put out there, 7% increases next year. Is that on par with what you guys were already figuring? That's uh, about 6 or 7%. Mm -hmm. we, we just rolled out a very aggressive wellness program 
and I'm sure we're going to talk about that a little yeah. later, um, that we're very excited about. It's called Accelerate Your Health, um, where we look at biometric screenings, activities. It's got our, uh, from top down, senior leadership involvement on, yeah. on the program. There are incentives that we provide uh, employees to take uh, the blood test, the biometric screenings. We're hoping that there will be a return on that. Um, there's a lot of studies out there that there will be returns out there. It's a little bit long-term in focus, yeah. but now is the right time to do it. Vicki, so, I, I wanted to get you in on this. He, he sure. kind of set the stage for Absolutely. the next topic. And talking about those wellness programs and the need for companies, we're seeing more and more companies doing this. Is this just proactive or reactive? Um, I think I think it's really a matter of timing and you know I've been in this industry for 20 some years and we really haven't changed what we're doing it's really just focusing more on innovation and the delivery of service and so we really can't and do your main goal is to get the UT campus healthier absolutely students faculty and staff and, yeah. and designing programs cannot be a one-size-fits-all so a 19 year old college student is some, definitely you know somewhat different than you know a, a 50 something um, faculty member so it can't be a one-size-fits-all fits all yet it needs to be accessible and it needs to be um, you know available to those folks um, at, at, at really a continuum of, of, of care. Lori when you look at a, a smaller company like yours you have a total of how many employees? 50. 50 employees and and when you look at health care costs and how many are you you I would assume provide health care for your employees and when you look at the costs that are coming down the line with this Affordable Care Act and the, the goal of it is to make more available for less cost, but is that the way you see it flushing out? Uh, it was interesting, Mark and I were just talking because there's parts of the law that are still up in the air. Mm -hmm. So we really have no idea what's going to happen in the next couple of years. I know that at this point, our plan just continues to go up year after year. and. Um, Premiums, I'm hoping co-pays, all of the premiums, co-pays. We're on a high deductible plan now. We've mm -hmm. had to go to make the plan affordable for us and for our people. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, I'm hoping it's going to lower our costs because there's going to be larger pools. When you're a small employer, your pool is very small. So all it takes is two or three big events like we had last year, and suddenly your plan costs go way up. So I'm hoping that part of the um, plan will allow us to be part of bigger pools and maybe overall decrease our costs. I think by, and I think people will agree, by definition, by design, that this is a good idea, but could the timing, and as you look at it, Dr. Dobrikowski, as you look at it and uh, what your school is looking at, bringing in people who are in the healthcare industry to try to manage better for these businesses, but is the timing just bad? Well, I mean, we're coming out of a recession, the Great right. Recession, as it's been called, yeah. especially for Northwest Ohio. Sure. Uh, how many, how many times, how many visits did we get over the uh, election period? <laughs> Obviously, something was affecting our economy. No, quite a few. Well, you know, clearly, with or without health care reform, now is the time to improve the delivery of health care. You know, we spent a lot of time talking about health insurance costs, and, and certainly it's health insurance costs that the employer sees. Uh, the employer bears, you know, 70 percent of the cost of providing health insurance. But I think it's also useful to take a step back and think about what drives health insurance costs, mm -hmm. right? Certainly there's a trade margin there, but the reality is health care costs drive health insurance costs, right? So the real focus ought to be on how we you know, improve the delivery of health care, uh, ultimately reduce costs, but at the same time, there's not necessarily a trade-off between cost and quality. There are you know, enormous opportunities to improve both, cost, quality, uh, and uh, access to care. Um, the Kaiser Foundation released a report that said, you know, in 2015, we're expecting health care costs to be at 20% of GDP, uh, $4 trillion. Uh, if you think about the delivery of health care, up to 40% of the cost of health care rests in what we call supply chain or logistics types of activities, materials, right? Um, estimates are that, so that's $1.6 trillion of the $4 trillion, right? <laughs> Many folks estimate that half of that can be saved just through more efficient uh, delivery, more streamlined processes and so forth. So that means there's $800 million on the table that we can, uh, you know, realize in terms of benefit just through doing what we do better. I, I want to bring up something that I found uh, through a, a newspaper, uh, an editorial down in South Carolina, the, the writer of this, Lonnie Adamson, and we can show people at home as well. She said, is it possible that the Affordable Care Act will encourage rather than 
discourage business development. You talked about bringing on jobs. How many people do you know who work for corporations, she says, or small companies, mostly for health insurance? Some work at a wage that provides them little more money, a little more money than what is needed to pay health insurance premiums. And she continues, she says, some of those uninsured, of course, are the people who are unhealthy and can't afford to buy health insurance. The cost to the hospitals doesn't simply go away. Of course, insured patients and private pay patients pick up the tab. My question to both of you, Mark and Lori, is the hiring mode. And we are continually talking about the, we're getting out of this recession. We're starting to see more companies hiring. But when you guys look at throwing this curveball in there, does that, let, I guess, take your foot off the pedal a little bit? Mark, start. Um, <clears throat> I mean, when we have opportunities to hire folks uh, in, in key positions in that, I mean, we kind of look at the entire package, the total rewards package, as we call it, where compensation, health care, all the type of benefits that we allow, 401k, um, life insurance and everything. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at it in that context. Now we place a lot of value on our plan. We, we think that our health care plan is very competitive. We market it every other year, an in-depth market, and then we also do surveys every year. So a lot of large employers really take that avenue that, you know, the health care plan, the way it's designed, making sure that it's competitive, is an attraction. I mean, after all, Health care is the number two area of compensation that prospective right. em employees value. Number one being sure. compensation. Right. Number two is clearly health care. So it's a pretty important part of a, a large employer. But, but isn't it also understandable, Lori, that the bigger pool of employees, the lower the costs go down, just a supply and demand factor, correct? And for you, supplying to 50-some people obviously costs you a little more. It costs us uh, quite a bit of money. We figure that... Health insurance is 20%, you know, somewhere between 15 and 20% of the employee cost. Um, we're on that bubble of 50, mm -hmm. but at this point we're continuing to hire. Um, we've always provided health insurance, so for us it isn't, well, now we're over this and now we have to provide it and we haven't. Yeah. So yeah. for us it really isn't changing what we're doing from a hiring perspective. So this isn't a dire time by any stretch of the imagination? Not, not. Dealing with this? Because we already order, offer health insurance. Right. I think for people who have a ton of part-time people mm -hmm. and all those people are right on that edge of 30 hours or they're sitting on the edge of 50 people, it might yeah. be different. We're going to talk in our second right. segment but as far as the fast food industry is concerned. Mark, you want right. to jump in real yeah, quick? I think a lot of it, and from Dana's perspective, is really the industry that's driving how we, you know, how often we hire people, to be honest with you. And again, going back key positions yeah. you know, that we would need to fill. But that's really the driver, not really health care. Um, not right now. Okay. It, it may be a part in the future. It depends on the, the impact on uh, that the uh, the new law mm -hmm. has, especially again years 14 and 18. Yeah. But I mean, right now, I mean, in the auto industry, there's still some optimi optimism there. A lot of caution though too. Mm -hmm. um, the crises in Europe, for example, definitely has an impact on how we you know, what, what we're looking forecasting. So yeah. as we go forward, and obviously the mindset, and we've seen it in a lot of the opinion pieces that are out there about the Affordable Health Care Act, maybe the mindset is getting people healthier, mm -hmm. and, and that is the mindset over at the university as well. Absolutely, and, and I think that... But is that easier said than done, I guess? It's, it's a well, nice concept. The fact of the matter is that, you know, our society continues mm -hmm. to become more unhealthy. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's, as, as, it's as if um, we are in this process for the long haul. And as you stated earlier, you know, these um, lifestyle changes don't happen overnight. You know, you didn't gain 50 pounds in one day and you're not gonna take it off in one day. And so it Although really- we do have Thanksgiving coming up in a few days. <laughs> absolutely, so. and a turkey trot to, to <laughs> go along with it. Um, well, but, we walked here from campus. Okay, <laughs> yeah, your story, tell it the way you want. <laughs> but, but it, you know, it's, it's the, the mindset of individuals taking responsibility of yeah. their own personal health and wellness. And, and um, how we deliver healthcare is really, you know, the opportunity to train um, not only physicians, but you know, our nurses, our pharmacists, our um, future leaders in the healthcare industry to deliver a preventative and wellness approach. And David, I'll give you the final word before we go to break. I mean, how, how moving forward, how do you, I guess 
tell your students who are coming into your new school and, and tell them that the work they're going to do is, is important, is vital, especially what we're seeing right now, and as Mark said, not knowing what 2014 and 2018 are going to bring about. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, there's no question that healthcare providers are, you know, being managed more and more like a business, and that's because they're facing pressures more and more like other industries, like manufacturing faced 20 years ago when we had quite the resurgence in American manufacturing. There are pressures for cost, pressures for quality, patient, pressures for patient satisfaction, and so right. forth. So what we're doing at UT at the School of Healthcare Business Innovation and Excellence is providing a, a platform. Uh, for coursework, research, and outreach and engagement that operates really at that intersection of medicine and business. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, physicians uh, and other clinical leaders are being asked to do more and more uh, in the area of business planning, in the area of process improvement, in the area of IT implementation now, mm -hmm. all designed to try to improve healthcare delivery. Well, they don't necessarily come with that skill set, you know, from a uh, medical training background, right? right? But when you integrate uh, that uh, training with uh, a business focus, again, at that intersection of healthcare and, and business, uh, you know, you can see some big benefits and pay some big dividends. We're going to continue this conversation on the other side of the break. I want to thank all my guests here. Thank you so much for spending some time. We'll be right back right after this.